I think about this really in, in, in the following terms. So we are focusing heavily on creating a group of world leading experts and establishing for that group of experts the very best collaborations in the industry. We've also spent a lot of period of time over the last year or two ensuring that those experts have access to the very best hardware through collaborations with groups like Cerebrus and NVIDIA. And what's been very important to us in addition to that is to ensure that we choose the right set of problems for that group to solve. And in particular, a, a substantial problem that we're focusing on is the one of connecting variants that we um, acquire through our numerous um, genetics collaboration through ultimately to genes and functions associated with those genes. So we're very much approaching this from the point of view of ensuring that we have a high quality team of the right people, that we surround those people with the right infrastructure, be it data or compute hardware, and that we give them a substantial and significant problem to solve in the context of the variant of function problem. It's critically important to us that we have a group of world-class partners. We recognize that we can't do this alone. And that in addition to that, we recognize that ensuring that we have a pipeline, if you like, of talented individuals who are learning the foundational skills that are required to work in the areas that we've identified is firmly put in place. We, we see that Mahila is, as almost a unique individual in, in the world. We found somebody who is clearly an expert with regards to AI ML, but also has a deep passion and desire to understand and help solve problems in medicine. We look for people like that ourselves. Kim Branson, the leader of our team, um, shares those characteristics with, with Mihaila. And so partnering with CCAI um, gives us an opportunity to begin to establish a pipeline to search for those talented people that we need to join our group in the future. And at the same time, allows us to add Mihaila to our group of world-class collaborators. We first met with Mihaila actually through our um, relationships with, with Cambridge University. I, I think one of my first um, meetings with her was actually in Stevenage in the days where we could do face-to-face -face meetings and Mihaila was good enough to come and spend uh, a two hours or even a morning, if I recall correctly, with us. At that point in time, we were still searching through what is the right and most impactful problem for us to begin to solve using AIML methodology. And it was evident from the minute that Mihaila walked into the room and in the subsequent conversations that we'd found somebody who had exactly the same approach to AIML as, as we do, who recognizes and fully understands the importance of picking the right problem, who recognizes and fully understands the importance of having the right data, and of course, within the context of this, who recognizes the importance of having excellent people focus their attention on that problem. Or it, we have a number of collaborations in the UK that, that sit around the AI and tech agenda for us. I think it's really important to understand that at the highest level, what we're trying to solve with AIML is this problem of linking a variant to a gene and ultimately from that gene to a function. We've been a world leading investor in genetics since the um, earliest of our interactions with Open Targets and UK Biobank, and they, they date back to 2014. During that period of time, and together with our collaborations with 23andMe, we have amassed what is getting close to now a collection of almost 100,000 variants for which we have a strong link between that variant and a trait in the context of a disease. Now, because of the nature of genetic architecture, it means that we can, at best, perhaps fully understand and interpret only as much as 15% of those variants. And the factors that determine whether or not you can interpret a variant with regards to its genetic architecture are not the same as the factors that would then qualify that variant and the associated gene as being excellent drug discovery targets. 
So it's critically important to us that we can take that 15% of 100,000 variants and increase it to perhaps 40, 50, 60% of 100,000 variants so that we can begin to do a even better job of selecting the very best drug targets from that list. Now, in order to solve that problem, you have, in my opinion, one of the most interesting problems in biology at the moment, which is understanding how our cells uniquely within the context of their each individual character or phenotype are able to orchestrate gene expression. It really is a wonderful problem for which we now are well placed with regards to accessing this and then the necessary data types to be able to address that problem, but one for which we absolutely need the data processing capabilities that come by applying AI ML to the problem. We are aiming to hire the very best people that we possibly can from anywhere in the world. Our AI ML group is actually spread over a number of different geographic locations, and that's because we focus very much on keeping standards high and finding people who are right at the top of um, their discipline, and also people for whom the mission that I've described is one that they find compelling. I'm very hopeful that because of Mihaila's character and the character of the group in Cambridge, that exactly those sorts of individuals will be coming out with PhDs from CCAIM, and therefore they will be potential colleagues in the future at GSK. We've been working um, hard over the period of the last two years to build a really world-leading AI team. We're distributed over at least six locations in the globe. That, that is um, in Boston, in Philadelphia, in London. For example, we, you'll have heard last year that we, we were planning to invest um, 50, uh, sorry, 10 million pounds in our hub in, in London. The team, we have ambitions to build out to be a team of about 100 strong. Um, I think we're about 60 or 70 into that at the moment. I was particularly excited last year um, when we were able to recruit Steve Crozan, who's now heading up the UK group. Steve was one of the um, early leaders, in, in fact, of the, the Google AlphaFold program that, that hit the news at the end of last year, talking about protein folding. In addition, I'll, I'll also highlight Jeremy England, who is an MIT professor, he, he um, joined us um, 18 months ago, I think now, and is, is, is based in Boston and working on causality. I, I won't spend time talking about everybody, but key principle here is we're looking to hire really world-leading individuals. We're growing in size. We're focusing on important problems. And we're making sure that the backdrop, which is necessary to enable people to apply their data science skills to data sets, has been worked out effectively for them, be that in the context of computing power or in the backdrop of um, background data science and curation. We have, for example, in our data lake, RDIP at um, GSK, a world leading resource with, with regards to R&D data uh, that we've acquired in the past. And we have an active program which we're kicking off this year aimed at creating learning cycles through iteration in data and functional genomics. Ultimately, this is all about helping patients. We know from work that we've published in the past that drug discovery targets in the clinical phases of development that have strong genetic evidence enjoy a twofold improvement in their chances of success. Now that might not seem like an awful lot, but when you're working in an industry in which 95% of what you do fails, improving that to a point at which only 90% fails represents a massive improvement. And I'm one of the few people in the industry who's been lucky enough to discover a new medicine. And actually it was one that is often used as a poster child for the use of genetics in drug discovery. So I've seen how this actually works in practice. And I'm passionate about making sure that we can fully interpret the wonderful information resources that we're getting out of GWAS studies and genetics, as I mentioned earlier, in order to do a better job of pointing at targets that are likely to have function and likely to have impact on disease. So ultimately, patients will benefit because we will be more successful.